you know, folks, I've been thinking a lot lately over what is actually going to have to be done if Trump does get back in office, which God willing, he will, as far as what he needs to do in order to get our country running in the right direction. I'm not talking about the border because that is definitely part of the problem. What I'm talking about is the fact of the matter is we've got people in a lot of these uh, three-lettered agencies, including people like Alejandro Mayorkas, who should never have gotten the job. Uh, we're going to find out that three-quarters of the FBI, the whole seventh floor of the CIA, um, the top-tier people in all of our uh, DNI, all of our uh, national intelligence agencies, are complicit to what has happened over the last several years involving our election, over the fact that there's been hoaxes and things perpetrated against presidents, while on their watch they did nothing about it. There are so many different levels of corruption, including our Department of Justice and our FBI, looking out for the laptop and doing their best to try to find some kind of dirt on the Trump. Uh, we all know what's really going on here, folks. We've got Obama appointees that have been in these three-lettered agencies ever since Clinton and Obama started appointing these folks uh, 15 years ago, and um, we're just stuck with them at the moment, but... I wonder how Trump is going to be able to come in and fire all of these folks that have uh, definitely come out against him, starting with the 51 intel, intel agents that have lied over the Russia collusion hoax. But I'm talking about everybody involved. I'm talking about the Adam Schiff's, everybody that went out of their way to try to do traitorous, treasonous things to our country and to our president in order to try to steal his power, try to kick him out of power, try to make sure he can never run for power again. <clears throat> so I wonder, when Trump gets back, how we will go about fixing a lot of things. Some things will be policy change and executive order. Trump will be able to fix the border pretty quick and easy, I believe, uh, by throwing uh, massive efforts in that direction. Congress financing executive orders. We can reverse policies and fix that pretty quick and easy. But the hardest thing to fix, I think, will be the fight he will have between the legal system trying to prevent him from doing his job by having the three-letter agencies do their best to undermine him. But this time around, I can say a few things. He will not have the Christopher Rays and the Bill Bars in the end to contend with uh, to milk toast the whole what happened in the elections issues and the things that they refuse to look into like the laptop from hell. But uh, I think Vivek Ramaswamy has the best of ideas as far as um, how we're going to have to handle uh, things starting in 2025. Now, Trump has talked about defunding the FBI and uh, taking some of these top-tiered people out of, out of office, but I think Vivek has a better answer. Now, it may not be advantageous for Trump while running for president telling the three-lettered agencies that he's going to take them out. Now, that would be something I would wait till I showed up, had the job, and then said, look, boys, there's a new sheriff in town. we got a new way of doing things. And uh, that that's what I would do. I would throw them uh, surprise bombs at all these three-lettered agencies the minute he gets back in. I'm not talking about congressional hearings that last three years to find out who was lying to who. I'm talking about straight, you're fired because I don't like the way you've acted over the last several years. You're out. I believe he does have the executive uh, ability to get rid of a lot of people, including some of these military idiots that keep letting our people get killed overseas. I'm not talking about Biden. I'm talking about these generals that are sitting in uh, sitting in politics like they're a bunch of congressmen themselves. They are dictating uh, political policy uh, with their wartime efforts or their lack of wartime efforts. It looks like we are literally careen careening into... World War III, with this fickleness, with this uh, warmongering nature of half the rhinos and all the Democrats in a good part of the military-industrial com complex, at least the generals at the top, they like that uh, warmonger money. Um, I'm talking about big military contracts, which pretty much keeps everybody in Washington afloat, whether it be from big business or from big military contracts. That lobbyists is or how. These $100,000 a year politicians end up having $40 million homes. It's the only way it could happen, folks. Now, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, let's talk about, let's let them talk about uh, what needs to be done. And I hope Trump does 
put Vibic in his cabinet and maybe puts him in charge to take care of some of these things that Vibic has suggestions about. I'm talking about shutting down these three-lettered agencies, and I can't wait. By just firing Christopher Ray at the FBI. I, or 100% Anthony Fauci, right. Yeah. You have to break the apparatus. You have to shut it down. It's the only option. Now, there's always two risks, right? Do, do you not cut enough fat? In which case, you know, you haven't you haven't cut enough, or do you cut too much that you take the risk of cutting muscle? I would take that risk over the risk of not cutting enough. Because if you have an eight at a hydra and you cut off one of the heads, yeah. it grows right back. You have to gut it at its core. Yes. And absent that, no amount of reform is going to actually make that difference. And so that's why I was so passionate, animated, even running in a race against a man who I immensely admire, which I think I made abundantly clear over yeah, the course it, of the race, I, if I you were watching. Is. I respected Donald Trump immensely for his contributions to this country. I think it, it takes a businessman. He did something that nobody had ever else done. Yeah. The expression I use in the campaign trail was he rolled that log over and we saw what crawled out of that swamp, 100%. which I respected. But the contrast I was drawing from your father is I want to come and bring the pesticide now, right? There's a role for the listen, guy to expose I, I, it. I like that role. You, you have, listen, you, you, it's clear you, you, you've done the research. You understand where these things are. You understand who yeah. those things are. And and you're right. It's not just Ray. I, you know, I used to do the uh, often. I'd be like, listen, we make a distinction between the door kickers and the bureaucrats at the top at the FBI. But like now I'm yeah. like, well, now you're you're arresting innocent people. You're breaking down their doors with machine guns. Like, when do you guys say enough is enough? Like, I've given you the hall pass for your I'm just doing my job. But when you're doing your job, knowingly <laughs> infringing on rights, when you're entrapping, you know, some meth head to try to pretend there was a government, there was a you know, a plot to assassinate and kidnap the governor of Michigan. Like, it's all a lie. Like, when are you culpable? When do you, when do you lose the hall pass I gave you sure. for your just doing your job? Because you're no longer just doing your job. So, so the next time I have a conversation with your father again, because I have been impressed by how receptive he has actually been to reasoned analysis and argument. I'm going to actually talk to him about the FBI because, you know, I, I know there was, there was, you know, he's talking about the new building. What are they going to do? Let's actually just get to the math of this. There's 35,000 employees at the FBI. Listen, okay. folks. 20,000 of them are the back office bureaucrats in the J. Edgar Hoover building mm -hmm. and the other back office functions throughout the federal government. That's where the rot comes from. So firing Christopher Ray and giving him a new building, that's not going to get the job done. We have to shut it down. The 15,000 people who are the frontline cops most of them are just following directives. Yeah. Don, I'd say let's move them to the U.S. Marshals or to the DEA, flawed as the DEA is, yeah. or to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network at the U.S. Treasury that goes after the SBFs of the world. So just take the, the line soldiers, and even if you move them to some of the agencies that have been corrupted, but for the J. Edgar Hoover building at the FBI, the institution itself, what I call the failed Bureau of Investigation, the 20,000 back office bureaucrats at the FBI, we have to be willing to do the hard thing and actually shut it down.